Well, hi everyone. Um, thank you for joining uh, Britannica Digital Learning here for Britannica School of Basics. So I'm gonna be walking you through um, a lot of the great features that you have available with Britannica. And my name is Laurel Green. I am one of the education consultants for Britannica. I uh, represent the Western region of the United States. I put my contact information here too. So that's my email, it's L Green. Make sure there's that extra E at the end of my name at ep.com. So if you have any questions uh, from anything that I talk about in this um, presentation or anything about uh, Britannica that you might need to ask, you can feel free to reach out to me. I also put our technical support there at edsupport at ed.com. Our ed support is, they're awesome. So if you ever have any questions about anything technical, they're there. You can always talk with me if you need to, and I can help loop them in as necessary as well. Um, but I live in Long Beach, California, and I a little bit about my background. I am a former teacher, so I taught um, in a charter high school in here in Long Beach area for about uh, five years. And then I um, went into more private education. I did that for about five years, and I've worked with nonprofits and after school space focusing on curriculum development. So I've done a little bit of everything. I've worked basically pre-K all the way through 12th grade. Um, and now I'm here with you. I've been with Britannica for about two years and I'm really excited to talk to you about the resources that you have. And so your resources that you have are the Britannica School, Image Quest, and Britannica Academic. And so uh, we're going to, for the purposes of this session, really focus on Britannica School. But I'm going to do just a quick little shout out to the highlights to Image Quest and Academic as well so that you know where those are and how you can use those and how they also interact with Britannica School. So Britannica School is a resource that offers you three levels of online resources for students and educators. Plus there is a Britannica fundamental section, which is specifically geared for those early learners, pre-K through second grade students. And I will show you that when we get to that portion of the, um, the resource. But Britannica offers you so much content. You have articles, photos, illustrations, there are primary source documents, maps, so much information that's there for you to be able to explore. Um, it's accessible on any device, anywhere at any time. And we pride ourselves on being a safe, reliable, and up-to-date resource. And so speaking to that, um, you can stay accurate and relevant. We try to do about 1,200 or more monthly content updates that are made by our in-house editorial team. And that team does include former teachers and educators on, on staff as well. And so when we go into the resource, I'm actually going to show you. You can go onto the home pages of the middle and high school homepage and see those updates in real time. So this is a resource that's regularly updated. People always talk to me about, you know, they have a lot of fond memories of our old volumes of encyclopedias, and those were wonderful. But one of the benefits of being digital is that we are able to give you those updates um, in real time, which is wonderful. And then if you look over here, I have a quick little um, just uh, infographic that gives you a, just a little bit of a feel of our editorial process. So we have a selection of people from subject editors, copy editors, fact checkers. Essentially what you're seeing is five different sets of hands are looking at a piece of material before it goes live on our website, on our, on our resource. So we do try to be very intentional. We make sure that we have content experts who are a part of the resources that you're looking at. And so this makes it, you know, compared to sometimes other resources that you can go to or just random Google searches that you could do, you don't necessarily know um, who's writing the material, where it's coming from, but with Britannica, you have that um, assurance. So this can be a great resource to direct patrons to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you into the resource. So we're going to go into school.ed.com. And what you're going to see within the resource here is uh, these trees. So you have, you know, a little baby tree to represent elementary and you can see how it grows into a full tree for the different levels. So I can click here to go into the elementary, middle or high school. And then we have little drop downs here so that I can do a keyword search from one of the three areas. 
I also want to highlight for you up here in the top right, you'll see a little thing that says your Britannica resources. So when I click on it, you're going to see a lot because I have all the resources of Britannica since I work for Britannica. But if you were to click on that, it would show you things like ImageQuest and Academic and those other ones so that you could easily navigate to your additional resources. So I want to make sure you know where that is. But let's go ahead and do a keyword search so you can get a feel of some of the things that are there for you. I'm going to go ahead and do one here from the middle school level. So I'm going to click on the search button here and let's do one on Pompeii. As I search, you're going to see that it's going to recommend some different things. I can click on those and go directly into that resource or I can click on this magnifying glass and it's going to take me into my uh, search results page. And what that's going to do is give me all the options related to my keyword search. When I come here to the search results page, you're going to first notice this reading level up here at the top. And you'll see level two is highlighted because we're looking at that middle school level. But what's great here is if I wanted to see what was at the high school or the elementary level, with a click of my mouse, I can just click on these here and look at the content there. So I don't have to go out and back to my trees and do a separate keyword search to look at those different levels. I can look at everything from this one keyword search. And then underneath that, you're going to see the different content types that are available for you. And you'll see it's going to default with articles. So here's our article on Pompeii. I'm going to dive into that here in just a moment. Of course, that's our sort of meat and potatoes of our content here. But like I said, Britannica has a ton of additional content. So if you just clicked on the article, you might miss some of the other really cool features that are here. So we're going to take a moment and look at some of those, and then we're going to come back. So next to that, you'll see here we have our images. And so within Britannica School, we do have images that are provided for us. So you see some of them are here. You can adjust how you want to be able to look at these images. To give you also a feel here, for example, if I bump up to high school, you're gonna see that there's maybe a few more images that are available to me here to be able to look at. So our editorial department sort of makes uh, decisions on what we think are going to be best for our audience. So you'll see some different content in the three levels. So if you're not finding something that you're looking for, you might want to take a peek at one of the other levels to see if it's there for you. But when you click on an image here, so here we have an image of Pompeii. And when I go into my media details here, you'll see some icons that are up here at the top that I can use. The first one is a little arrow. This is the ways that you can share this image. So you can share it with a direct link, you can email this directly to somebody else, put in their email address and I'll get an email for it. But we also have integrations with things like Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams. So you can easily integrate if you use one of those resources as well. Next to that, you're gonna see there's a little star to favorites. We're gonna dive into this in just a little bit, but you can create a personal My Britannica account so that you can um, favorite content and do some other really cool things, which I'll show you in just a little bit as well. But if you are logged in you would, and wanted to favorite it, that's where you'd click on that. You could print these if you want to. And we also provide automatic citations. So you can select from our four major citation styles that we provide. So if you're needing to cite something and you use APA, it'll generate that for you. And then you can easily copy and paste that and put that into a works cited document or whatever it is that you might need to uh, use that citation for. And then of course, there's a little bit of text here. So if you wanna increase and decrease the font size there, you can do that as well. So great features for you to be able to use with these images. All of these are rights cleared for non-commercial use. So as long as you are using our images in any sort of educational based purpose, you don't have to worry about copyright infringement, which can always um, be a relief for us as well. Now, you also have access to Britannica ImageQuest. And so you will see right here, it says Britannica ImageQuest, view your search in ImageQuest. So if I click on that, it'll automatically take me into ImageQuest. And what it will do is do my search there for me. So one of the benefits here is what you're going to see is when we were doing the search in Britannica schools, you have some images there. But of course, here with ImageQuest, you have over 2000 images that you can use. So this can be a great resource uh, for research for students looking for different specific images. And once again, all rights cleared for non-commercial use. I'm not going to spend a ton of time here, but I do just want to highlight a couple of things that are really great here. We have some great filter options here. We have um, over 62 different collections, so you can 
filter and view images from these different ones like Getty images, all sorts of other ones that are in here for you to be able to explore. So you could select, for example, here, and it will just filter based on that. So we have 13 from that one. But or maybe you're looking for something for a specific shape. You can also filter here. So if you want it to be, for example, only a vertical option, then you can be able to view it by that. And also clip art here for you as well. So you can do a keyword search from here. When you click on an image, it's going to have a lot of the same features that I was showing you here as well. You can also create, uh, you log into your personal account here, save images, do all sorts of things. So really great resource. If you're looking for images, you're going to have um, over 3 million images that are provided for you within ImageQuest. So a wonderful resource for you to go and spend some time in as well. So like I said, from Britannica School, you can go into that resources area, or if you're doing uh, research here from Britannica School, you can just come right here and it will do your search automatically for where you, what you're searching on. All right, so now we're gonna pop over here to our video section. And within our videos, uh, a couple of things that I want to highlight for you is you'll see um, under here, we have our video transcript. So we have full printable transcripts of our video content that are right here at the bottom for you to be able to view. So you can easily print those if you want to. You have those same things that I was just showing you before to be able to share and get those automatic citations. And then there's a couple of additional features, but you have to press play in the video to be able to see them. So I'm gonna press play to show you. So what you'll notice here is you have your standard uh, video playing features. There's a little pop out if you wanna see this in the full screen. Right now, of course, you can see it's um, cutting off on my screen here. But if you want to download these videos, maybe you wanna put it into a slide deck, some sort of presentation that you're doing, you can do that. That And that feature is going to be provided here. But we also offer some different accommodations. So we offer the option to toggle on audio descriptions if you need that as well as closed captioning. And both of those can be found here within the videos for you as well. But lots of great video content. And like I said, you can download any of these and you can have those automatic citations for you as well. And then let's go into the more section and that's where it's going to show you the rest of the content here. We have our dictionary. I'm gonna dive into this a little bit more when we get into um, our article content. Our uh, dictionary though is provided by our sister company, Merriam-Webster. So you can always look up words here if you want to. And then if you go into our magazines, magazines are provided by um, EBSCO. So this will be additional content that you can go and explore lore related to your keyword searches. Some of them you'll see here are going to say PDF version. When you see that, that means when you click on those, you're going to have the full scan of it as if it's a magazine. You can download it with all of the images and formatting that's available to that. Where if you don't see that, for example, this one right here, then it's just going to provide you the text of that content. So if you see those PDF versions, I always recommend clicking on those. You're gonna get additional great content that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. So make sure you check those ones out for yourself as well. And then keeping uh, further down here, we have our web's best site. I really like this, especially uh, for younger students, students who are starting to learn how to do research. What this is, is these are websites that uh, our editorial department have reviewed and said, this is a great website to go and check out on this topic. And so as we know, when there's so much content out there for students um, and they're trying to figure out what is a good place to go, this can be a great place. It can be a great one if you're looking for you know, if you have any educators that are going to be using this resource, these might be a good one to use as a good website to show them it's like, this is a good website. Why do we think this is a good website to go to maybe comparison to other types of websites? So great place to direct students. Of course, something also for educators to know if you're using this and you don't want students going outside of, you know, this will take them into other websites and things. Um, so if you're wanting to keep them within Britannica School, you know, probably don't want to highlight this. But great place to look for content uh, outside of Britannica School to be able to share. And once again, you'll notice, for example, if you go up to the high school level, it's going to have a few more additional options. So we're considering, you know, what is the correct um, and best resource to maybe share with the different age groups so you can easily adjust the levels in that way. And then the next thing that we have here is our primary sources and ebooks. So we offer uh, primary sources 
and ebooks at the middle and high school levels. So when you're doing a keyword search there, you'll be able to find that. So if you're looking for things like the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, or things um, like the complete works of Shakespeare, uh, we have the complete works of Jane Austen. So, you know, historical and literary documents, um, this is a great section to come here and check out. So for example, here we have the last days of Pompeii and you can use that resource if you want to click on that. So if you're doing uh, keyword searches around those, you might wanna check that out at the middle and high school level for you. So great content to be able to explore in addition to those articles, but let's go back over to the article section here and talk about some of the features that are here. Uh, within the articles, you will see over here, you can do an advanced search if you want to. So if there's something specific that you're looking for and you need to get a little more exact, you can put in and utilize that search results feature. And we also have Lexile filtering. So you click on this, you choose the Lexile range that you're looking for. And it will only bring up articles that are going to then fall within this Lexile range. And then you'll also see that there's a little Lexile measure that's next to the article here for you as well. And then if you ever want to turn that feature off, it's really easy to do that. All you have to do is click on this little X here and that feature will get turned off for you as well. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into our article on Pompeii and talk about some of the features that are here for you. All right, so within our article, you're going to see all these icons that are along the top here. Some of these are similar to what we were just looking at with our images and videos. So we do have that share feature. One thing that's additional here is that you also have the option to save articles directly to your Google Drive if you want to do that as well. But we still have that star so you can favorite it. You could print those automatic citations. But we can also translate the article into over 100 different languages using Google Translate. So I can choose, for example, maybe I want to change it into Arabic. So I can translate this with a click of the mouse, and I'm going to be able to have it in whatever language that I might need um, support in. So this can be really great for students um, if they're, you know, in our in a classroom, special setting. You know, if you have any English language learners, they can use this as support. They can go home with family members and get that support as well. You can toggle over that text, and it'll tell you what the original text was in English as well. And so easy to turn that feature off. There's this little top bar that pops up here at the top whenever you translate it. And you just click on that little X there and it'll translate it back into English for you. Something to note about that though is that when it translates it, it only is a computer-based translation. So if you were to select the print option, it wouldn't print in that language, it only prints in English. But um, a great feature for anybody who might want to be able to uh, read any of our articles in a different language, they have that available to them. We also have the option to listen to the articles. You can have them read aloud at all three levels. I'm gonna play it just to give you a little feel of what it's like. So as you can see, it uh, highlights as it reads per sentence. So this can be a really great feature um, for students if they need support on developing reading fluency, or if you know maybe someone's more just an auditory learner and they want to have the articles read aloud to them instead, or even students, they might be wanting to take some notes and re listening to it while they write can be really helpful. So that's available to uh, you at all three levels. And then you also have the ability to increase and decrease your font size. So you can change it to whatever your preference may be. Within the article itself, you can use the, uh, or dictionary, like I was mentioning. So you can choose to click on a word. For example, let's double click on ancient. And any word that I click on, it's going to give me the definition of that word. You'll also see there's a little sound button here. So I can hear the pronunciation of that word. And then we even have a Spanish tab here. So if you have anybody who is a Spanish speaker primarily, and maybe they want to know as they're reading the text in English, what the word is in Spanish, they can utilize that if they need to as well. So a really great way to help students if they come across words that they're unfamiliar with to make sure that they're understanding the context of what they are reading. And then over here on the left, you're going to see this little reading level here. So we can adjust the um, reading level and look at the three different levels 
from here, just like you can with the uh, keyword searches. So this is really great to differentiate instruction in classrooms so that because we have, can have students from all different uh, levels, but this can be helpful in libraries too. If you know that students are struggling, they can uh, utilize adjusting those levels. And so I can easily click here to go up to the high school level. And similarly, I can go down to the elementary. What I think is important to note about this feature here is as I'm adjusting the levels, you're going to see that it's going to stay within the age that I'm looking at. So right now I'm accessing that elementary level, but it says that I'm in the middle school level. But it also is going to keep it within the look and feel of the age group that I'm in. So I'm going to open up another window here. You can go back into Britannica School. I'm gonna show you that same elementary article, but if I did the keyword search at the elementary level. So if we come and do it at the elementary level and click on Pompeii, this is what it's going to look like. So we do um, have it designed in what's going to be sort of the best experience for the age group that's utilizing it. So here at the elementary level, you can see it's brightly colored. It's meant to be a little bit more engaging for that younger audience when they're using our elementary article. Uh, we also offer the information to be chunked. So, you know, they're developing those early literacy skills. So a huge thing of text might be a little bit overwhelming to a younger audience. They take it in sections and focus on those areas for themselves if they need to. You can also see that that read aloud feature is a little bit more prominently displayed because once again, they're developing those literacy skills. And so they have that as a sort of cue to remind them that they can have this article read aloud to them. But of course, if you are a middle or high school student and maybe you need access to that elementary level um, article, the content, you know, a little less challenging in that way to help them develop those literacy skills that they're still working on, they may not want to go to one that looks like this. They might want to go to one that's going to look a little bit older that looks similar to the middle school article. So just keeping in um, mind the needs of those students. So when you're at that middle or high school level, it'll stay that age and look and feel of the articles so that they can get that content, get that support, and hopefully work up to that age level text that they need to be using. The other thing I want to highlight for you is Britannica Academic, which you also have access to. And so I'm gonna open up another tab. I'm just going to quickly show you, because there's a few features that I think are really helpful within academic. Um, our academic resource really is great for, I would say, you know, your AP students who are um, in high school but, or college. And so if I do my search on Pompeii here and go into the article, couple of things I just want to highlight that you're going to find here is, um, for example, you can see the article contributors that are going to be within our academic articles. So down here at the bottom, you're going to see that we have um, who specifically uh, participated in our content. This one is a professor of ancient history, wrote um, an article, uh, um, wrote a book on letters from Pompeii and other works about the excavations of Pompeii. So for people in that academic level, they're probably going to want to know that information. There's additional reading and recommendations of if you want to dive into this content a little bit deeper that's here for you at the academic level. And in addition, forgive my scrolling there, you'll see that there's the option to go into the article history at the academic level. So here you can go in and see the different updates that we've made, some of the changes, and when they specifically happened. So those are some features that um, you know, Britannica School doesn't offer. They're not as necessary for students in those K through 12 spaces, but the academic level is going to give you level or you know, adult level text and is going to have some of those additional features. So if you have people who are coming to use your resources that are more on that level, I would definitely recommend that you direct them towards using our Britannica academic resource. It's going to have some of those additional features that are there to support them as well. So little little plug there for that resource as well. But Britannica School is an excellent resource for anyone in your K through 12 space. What's really helpful, of course, is also the ability to adjust the reading levels, which you wouldn't have at the academic level as well. So a lot of great content for you to be able to go in and explore across all of the different resources that you have. Uh, but now what I want to do is I'm gonna click back over here to uh, Britannica School, which is going to take me back over to my trees. 
And I'm gonna take you through some of our home pages, which have some really great additional features for you um, that are geared towards the specific different age levels. So we're gonna start by looking at the elementary homepage. So each home page is designed um, with the age group in mind, and it's meant to, our, our, our mission at Britannica is to uh, ignite curiosity and spread the joy of discovery. And so each page sort of is designed to hopefully do that for students, that they will see things that will make them want to go and explore and learn more about a topic. So at the elementary level, you'll see that there's this little carousel for quizzes and there are questions, and then they can sort of guess what they think the answer might be. So they can say, okay, I think that this might have something to do with solar wind. Oh, nope, I'm not quite. That is, and then it's going to tell me I should go and read about windmills. So it's a way to spark uh, those questions. They can find out if they're correct or not. And then if they're incorrect, it'll direct them there. If they're correct, it will also tell them if they want to go in and dive a little bit deeper as well. And those change on um, every week. We have some different ones that are going to be highlighted at the top there for you. And then we have our Explore Britannica section. This is highlighted on all three of our home pages. It's a great way to browse the content that uh, we offer on the resource. And so you can choose to browse by articles, images, and videos or biographies. The article and image and video sections look identical. They're just gonna pull different content. So I'm gonna highlight and show you the images and videos one to give you a feel of what it looks like. So there are different topics here for you to select. So you could choose one that you might be interested in. Uh, for example, maybe you're interested in science and mathematics. And you'll see here that it's going to narrow your search results. So you could just start selecting what you're wanting to hone in on. So maybe I'm wanting to go into earth sciences and I'm really interested in geology. With a click of the mouse, I can then easily see what content is going to be available to me related to my uh, search results scenario. So great if you're starting to develop for a research project or just have a specific interest in mind. So like I said, you can do the same thing for the article section. It's just gonna pull up the article content instead. And then at the elementary level, we also do have our biography browse here. And it's very basic at the um, elementary level, it's just alphabetical. So you just choose a letter and it's going to then bring up your biographies by last name. When we get into the middle and high school section, you'll see that um, the browse feature for biographies is a little bit more specific. You can do all sorts of great filter results and I'll show you that when we get to that in just a moment. Now we have our Britannica Fundamentals section. Like I mentioned, this is geared towards our early learners, so pre-K through second grade. And so when you go into this resource here, what you're going to see are that there's these four different paths that you can choose to go in and explore. But I also wanna highlight something else. If you're working with this age group, uh, especially if you're an educator, it is so hidden, you wouldn't know it's here. But you can scroll down, way down here to the bottom, and you'll see that there's a little thing that says teacher guide. So you can download that teacher guide for this section. There are activities, it's correlated to the sta uh, common core standards, all sorts of things for you to explore. So if you work uh, with that age group and you want activities and things, go check out that teacher guide. But like I said, you wouldn't know it's there unless uh, someone highlighted it for you. But we have these four different paths. I'm not gonna dive into them for uh, sake of time because I wanna make sure I can go through everything that's available to you. But there are the options to read some eBooks. These are going to have things based on telling time, exploring shapes, some of those early literacy key skills. But um, you turn the pages and it highlights per word instead of per sentence. So if we're really working with those younger learners there. We also have an explore area where you can explore different biomes and there are videos and pictures related to the different biomes to help with some of those early geography skills. We also have a play section that has a collection of math and language arts games for students to be able to go in and play. There's a cute little otter. He's sort of like hosting a game show. It's really great and engaging for the younger audience. And then we also have a create area where students can draw pictures. Great way to sort of hone in on those, um, that pre-writing skill. They can go and explore something in Britannica School and then draw a picture of it. And they can save it to their Google Drive if they need to as well. So if you work with this age group or have uh, children that are younger, this could be a great place for them to come and explore in uh, Britannica School. 
And then further down on our homepage, we have our Animal Kingdom Browse. Often in the elementary level, some of those first research projects that students are doing are going to be on an animal. And so we have a section sort of dedicated to that where they can go in and they can explore by animal type, or they can go into all the Animal Kingdom here. And you scroll down and you'll see they can explore uh, by habitat as well. So maybe if you're studying and learning about deserts, you can see here, it's going to have a little information about the desert. You can dive in and learn more and see what animals would you would find that live within that um, habitat. And then we have our geography section. We have a geography section on all three of the different home pages. So I'm just going to briefly touch on it here and we'll go into it a little bit deeper on one of our other home pages. But we have um, a world atlas to be able to go in and explore. We also have a uh, tour of the USA, which is going to be the United States specific atlas. It's going to zoom in on that part of the world for you. We have a compare countries tool, so you can look at statistical information of two countries side by side. And then we also have a geography explorer game. This is unique to the elementary homepage. And what it is, is a little game being a little slow loading here, but it has a stick figure named Jog and you help him fill in a map. And so you play the game and you go through and put in continents, bodies of water, and he guides you through it and helps you do that. So if you're looking for a geography-based game to help on some of those early skills, that'll be here at the elementary homepage that you can go in and explore as well. So now I'm gonna go back to Britannica School here, and we're gonna zoom over to our middle school homepage and take a look at some of the features here. So like I mentioned, each page is going to kind of have a similar sort of look and feel, just considering uh, changes in terms of the age and the audience that we're looking at. So here we don't have those quizzes, but it's posing a question, you know, why is Atlantic, the Atlantic the saltiest ocean? And there's a picture there, but you're gonna to have to click on that article and go and explore. So it's meant to spark that curiosity. Do you think you know the answer? Go in and explore and maybe find out what that answer might be. And then we have that Explore Britannica area, like I mentioned, that's across all three of our different home pages here. But like I mentioned, the biography at the middle and high school is a little bit more uh, robust here. So here you can see, I can choose to filter my results by a whole bunch of different options here. I can choose by era, I can choose by National Cultural Association, I can choose what they're known for. So maybe it's by, I'm looking, I wanted to look at biologists, so here I can easily then pull up 1900 to present American biologists, and then I can even choose gender if I want to. So if I want to look at specifically some female biologists, I can see what's available to me here. So it's a way to be able to pull up some specific things related to any topic that you might want to go in and explore. So a little bit extra um, able to pull out there from the biography section for you as well. And then continuing to scroll down, at the middle school level, we also have these things called at a glance articles. I really like these because they're going to give you, you know, certain topics and give you sort of a broad understanding with a whole bunch of quick links to go and explore and learn a little bit more. For example, let's look here at the one on the solar system. So it's going to give you a little brief thing on what the solar system is. And then we're going to have links to all the different planets and then other related articles that you might want to go and explore and learn a little bit more about. So we have those on all sorts of different things, um, you know, on our, the presidents, and then you can have a list of all the different presidents, all sorts of different things to go in and explore. So you can go into the more at a glance and look at that. But if you also do a keyword search at a glance in the middle school level, those will come up for you to be able to explore. So if you're looking for one and you wanna see if we have one like that, you can use that keyword search to do that as well. We also highlight these did you know videos here at the uh, middle school homepage. What I like to highlight about this, um, especially when I'm talking with educators, you can see these are short. They're 30 seconds long. These can be really great attention getters for a lesson, or if you just have a curious kid and they want to go and learn a little bit something, they're short, thinking about, you know, things like TikTok and the way our world is going short is sometimes where people want to go. So this is where you can quickly learn some interesting things that you maybe didn't know before. And you can go into the more did you know to view some of the other videos in this collection. We also highlight a daily buzzword here 
on uh, Britannica's school. So if you come back every day, there'll be a new word. You can see how you can use it, what it means and how to pronounce it. And so build your vocabulary with Britannica's school by coming to the middle school homepage every day. And then we have more of those can you guess ones that you can go in and explore. We have that uh, geography section, like I mentioned, that's highlighted on all three of the home pages. And then we also uh, highlight some of our US primary source documents here. So these are some of the most popular ones that um, students often come to want to explore. Things like the, you know, these are geared towards United States history, so the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Monroe document, Bill of Rights, all those things. You can easily click on those and immediately find them here. And then at the bottom, you're gonna see our new and revised article section. So like I was mentioning, um, there's changes that happen. Um, of course, here we are, it's Monday morning. It's um, in Chicago right now. It's probably barely, you know, it's just about uh, eight o'clock or so. Um, so no changes here. We see them, they were last week. But often if you come here, you will see that day that there were changes. And then if you see anything that says new next to it, that means that that was a new piece of article content that was been, that has been added to our materials as well. And then you can go into the more new and revised articles and it'll give you the specific dates of when those, that content was updated as well. So now I'm gonna take us back over to our trees here, our homepage, and we're gonna take a look at that high school homepage. And here, once again, similar, but slight changes in terms of the content here. We're highlighting science and pictures with links to be able to go in and explore. We still have that explore section, but we have some different things here, like focusing on this day in history. So every day there's a highlight of a significant fact that happens in our history on this day. There's some different flash facts that you can go in and explore, uh, questions and going in and learning a little bit more. And then we also have their, this in their word section, which I really like. Uh, these are different quotes. You can click to generate a different quote. So just ones that are meant to uh, make you think, but they can be great also in a classroom as well if you're looking for a quick discussion topper, uh, topic or a quick write prompt, you can definitely use that as well. And then let's stop here and take a look at some of those other features that are in the geography section. So the first one is that explore uh, the compare countries tool. So what you do is you select two countries that you want to look at. So for example, let's look at Afghanistan and let's do Australia. So here it's going to then bring the statistical information side by side for you to look at. Um, so you can look at some inf information, for example, like life expectancy or things like literacy rate and see those information side by side. You can also go over here to the articles and media section, and it'll also put things like pictures and content for you to be able to explore. So if you're needing to look at two countries side by side, this can be a great tool to be able to use. And then we also have that world atlas. I really do like our world atlas. Um, I'm gonna go into the world part instead of the tour of the USA. Um, but it's basically sort of Google Maps, but paired with that Britannica content. So what I can do is I can zoom in on any part of the map here, or I can go here and do a search, for example, maybe like I was doing my Pompeii search, maybe I also then want to go and look at Pompeii. So I can do that. I can select it and it's gonna zoom in on that part of the world for me. And then what you'll notice, whatever country I'm over within Britannica school here in the Atlas section, then these three buttons are going to pop up. So I have a summary, here is my country. I can learn about Italy if I want to. Here's the profile of that country and also related article content. So I can go in and do a search on Italy or I can easily click on um, a couple of these things and learn a little bit more. But what I can also choose to do is I can uh, take this into satellite view if I want to, and then I can even go in and zoom in on a part of the world that I'm looking at. And then you'll see there's a little orange person. I can grab this person. And then anywhere that I see a blue line or dot is a place that I can drop my person. So for example, let's drop them right here. So if I want to, I can then go and take some virtual field trips. So I'm going to get to walk through the streets of Pompeii 
and explore and see. This can really make my learning come alive if I'm setting a place in history or if I'm looking at the setting of a novel and I wanna go and look at where that place is. I can then have the entire world at my fingertips. So this can be a really great way to make lessons and learning come alive by utilizing that feature as well. So some great features that are there for you to use as well. And then once again, those new and revised articles you'll see here at the high school level. So those give you a sort of a tour through the home pages and what's available to you there. But then what you'll also notice is up here next to your search bar um, at the, uh, the middle and high school section, there will be a little section that says students here. And this is resources to be able to help students as they are diving in to do research. So what you'll see is a ready for research guide. And this is going to walk them through from beginning to just start to do research all the way to wrapping up a project that's here. And um, it's a in-depth guide. It's around 60 different, it's about 60 pages. So we broke it into different steps so that uh, students don't have to feel like they have to sort through it. They can look for specific sections of their research process that they're going through. So for example, if I'm in the gathering information stage, I can click on that part of the guide. And it's going to give me some information, some recommendations. So it's going to talk about like, you know, looking at what primary and secondary sources are. Here are examples of what those things are. Uh, but then there's built-in activities. So students can use this guide to support them from beginning to end. These are editable PDFs that they can write in, but it's going to give you examples on how to do, for example, a search term results and how to narrow your search results using the example of King Tut's tomb and learning about King Tut. And then it'll give you a graphic organizer that you can then use to support you as you go through this as well. So all sorts of great um, ideas, how to evaluate information, tons of content here to really help, but also broken down into those steps so that students aren't having to wade through it, but they can look for specific things to help them. So if they're in that creating a presentation section and they want a little bit of extra help, they can go into step five and focus in and learn about that there. And then underneath that, we also have a selection of how-to documents on things from book reviews to science reports. So these are great, also helpful tools for students. They're just a little less in depth. I'd say these are about, you know, six to seven pages. So a much shorter document than our 60 page one, but tools to be able to help students um, in terms of maximizing using this resource, especially if they're coming here to do it for research. We also have an educator section here, which has links to our user guide, video tutorials, all sorts of additional content. There's also a curriculum standard browse. So if you wanna look up standards, you can easily do that from here as well. And now what I wanna do is talk to you about creating that personal My Britannica account. So you'll see up here, it says My Britannica. And so you can uh, sign into a personal account. This is optional. So all the things that I showed you, you're able to do without creating that personal account. But if you want to do that, you um, can choose to do a single sign on with Google if you already have a Google account, or you can choose to create an account with us really easy to do that. You just put in a username and password. Email is optional for students. And then you want to designate it if you're an educator or a student and create your account. And the, that account will work across all of our different resources. So if you create an account with Britannica School, you'll be able to use that same login information to log into ImageQuest or Britannica Academic as well. So I'm going to go ahead and sign into my account so we can talk about some of the features that are there. All right, so when I'm signed in and I click on this, you'll see a drop down of some different options that are going to be here for me. First one is I can go into my favorites. So as I was showing you before, when we were looking at our different content, there was that little star option available to you. So if you star something when you're signed in, it'll come here to your favorites. So then I can easily then pull up something that I might need to use for some sort of project or assignment that I'm working on. But then also, if you want to organize a collection of content, maybe you're doing research and you want it all in one place, as you can see, I've favorited a few, I have over 422 favorite things. So if you start to favorite a lot of stuff, you can organize it in also a resource pack. 
And that can be really helpful for both students and educators for students when doing research, but educators, if they wanna use this resource and share a collection of content, um, this can be really helpful as well. So I'm gonna show you an example of one to give you a feel of what you can do with it. So let me find, so here's one I have on democracy. So if I put in um, a whole bunch of my different favorites into my democracy resource pack, what you'll see is that with each content type that's in the resource pack, I have the option to add a note. So you can see here, for example, if I have some students and I'm wanting to share with them, I want them to go in and look at my article on ancient Greece. But of course, the article on ancient Greece is going to talk about a lot of stuff, not just democracy, but I really want them to look at that specific part. So I can add a little note here that says, you know, read the section on Athenian democracy to learn about the world's first democracy. So I can click on that, add that note so I can put in a key question or a directive like you see that I've done here as well. Or if I'm a student and I'm using this for a research purpose, I can put a note for myself, maybe how I want to use that resource or if there's something specific that I want to do with it, I can make those mental little notes there for myself as I'm doing research as well. So you can easily add those notes to each content type. I can also go in and I can edit a pack and when I edit a pack, when you scroll down here, you can also rearrange the content. So I can choose the order that I want my um, students, or if I'm working on it for my personal self, you know, maybe how I'm gonna order it in for my research project. I can put those things in the order that is gonna be most helpful for me or the way that I want to have someone else view it if I'm sharing that content. So I can order the content. And then also down here at the bottom of the resource pack, I can also choose to upload a document. So I can upload things like lesson plans, assignment rubrics, graphic organizers, anything that might be helpful in um, supporting someone going through this content. I can upload that information here as well. And then I can choose to save it. And then when I'm all done doing all of those things there, I can then easily share that content here with a direct link once again, to Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams. And it's really easy to go in and create one of these resource packs. Let's go back to this. You just create a new resource pack. Here's my Pompeii. Maybe I'm doing it for uh, sec my section five class or something like that. So I want to you know, be specific about that. Created my little resource pack. There's no items in here. But if I go and do a search on Pompeii, I can easily click on that little star. It's gonna tell me that it's been added to my favorites. You can see I've maybe added this to a different pack, but I can create a resource pack from here, or I can click in here and I can go and find my resource pack. Here's my Pompeii section five, done, and I've added it. Really easy to do that. And then I go back into my resource packs. There's my one item that's been added to it. So really easy to go in and add that content if you need to as well. Now, you can also, if you have an educator account, so when you were creating the account, you had the cho choice between choosing an educator or a student. If you choose it as an educator, you also have a few additional features here. You can choose to convert your research packs into a lesson plan if you want to. And if you do that, it's going to give you all the lesson plan builder things that you need to be able to do. And things like being able to put in your duration, objective assessment, and your procedures. So you can attach all of this information if you want to within here, and you can save it to your personal lesson plans. You can also choose to save and publish. And if you save and publish, what happens is other educators are going to be able to then utilize those lesson plans. And so if you go back up here into your My Britannica account, you'll see there's the lesson plans and public lesson plans. So lesson plans, here are my lesson plans that I have that I've used that I want to be able to look at. So for example, I did one here, a fine arts lesson on Beethoven. I can go in and explore that. Or I can go into public lesson plans and I can browse. Now, something to note about this, this is sort of a service that we're offering for you to be able to share content with other educators. So it's not um, similar to like where I was showing you the website where they've been, we, our editorial department is not going through embedding these, 
or making it available for other educators to be able to share content with one another. And it's helpful if you're maybe from similar schools, you can make things public and be able to find them and be able to utilize it in that way as well. But you have the filter option here. So you can choose your age uh, that you're needing to look for lessons or subject, and then be able to specifically pull up lessons. And so they're gonna be lessons that educators put together and the resource packs and content that they use. So great way to be able to share content uh, with other educators or, um, and be able to also save those lessons so that you know next year, coming back, you wanna do it again, you'll have it all saved there already in your, um, in your account for you to be able to use as well. So like I said, there's so much information here within Britannica School for you to be able to explore. Um, but there's a couple of additional things I wanted to highlight for you that are meant to support you. One of those is um, something called Britannica School Insights. What this is, is it's a free Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge extension that you can download to support you when using uh, Britannica School. And so I think it helps to see it. So I'm going to show you, we're gonna do a Google search here on Abraham Lincoln. So as I do the search, oops, what happens is, um, as you can see, you know, Wikipedia is going to come up probably often with is going to be the top search results, which educators aren't always going to want students to necessarily go that there first for a resource. And so what you have here is when you add this extension, it's going to bring Britannica School content to the top of your search results and sort of be a visual reminder that they have access to this resource. So you can see, I can then click in to go in to learn about Abraham Lincoln. It'll then take me into Britannica School. So it gives you that visual reminder. And it's really easy to go in and add that. You just go into, like I said, Google Chrome. You can also do it for Microsoft Edge. So you would just do a search for whatever that is. I'll show you on Google Chrome since we're here. So, so you just go to either of those stores pretty much do it the same way. You go in there and you would search for Canica School Insights. You would find it, download it, and then it would add that extension. And for example, for me here, I have my extensions that are here for me to be able to have so that I can have that. So easy to add that for you. Um, and then if you use anything like, um, Micro, you know, use Google, um, Bing, any of those types of search ones, it'll work with that to be able to bring up that content there for you. So that can be a really helpful resource. The other thing I wanna highlight for you is um, our Britannica Learn website has so much great content for you to be able to go in and explore if you go to BritannicaLearn.com. So let me take you in there and show you. So if you come to Britannica Learn, you'll go over here. We have all sorts of great things. If you come to our services here, under Professional Learning Services, we have a selection of public webinars that you can come and join us for. We have some coming up in January. Uh, so we have some Britannica School Basics, sort of like what I'm showing you now that you can come and explore. But if you wanna go in and talk about specific strategies, for example, we're gonna be talking about social emotional learning, uh, through the lens of the Universal Design for Learning. You can come in and join us on that in January. In February, we're gonna be talking about um, looking at how to teach black history through media literacy. So we have all sorts of great content. These are free for you to join. And I know that we have people that are joining me from all over the world. If you register for these, um, we will send you a recording of those. So you're welcome to join us for those if you want to. We also have some really great resources here to support you. So if you come into our resource section and come over here to our asset library, you're going to find, now I just wanna note uh, when I was here on Friday, they were in the middle of doing an update. So it might look a little bit, um, I'm not sure if we finished updating the site here, but okay, great. Looks like everything's all back to normal. So what you can do is go into your different products, which is, not bringing up for me right now. Let me try refreshing here. Oh, it's still, I don't know if it's my internet or we're having a little bit of a technical difficulty here, but I'll just talk to you about it. I won't show you, but if you go in and select Britannica School, 
you're going to find all sorts of great resources that are going to be here for you. We have a ton of graphic organizers. They're all edible PDFs that are there. But if you're looking for things like an icon or a search box that you want to put on a library page, we have a parent letter. Uh, so much great content that's here for you. Uh, things like fact checking tips with Britannica, uh, infographics, all sorts of stuff that are here in the resource section. So I recommend spending some time and checking that out. There's a lot of great content there for you. And then the other thing I did want to highlight is um, under the public webinar section here, we do offer um, asynchronous tutorials and we have one here for Britannica School. And if you click on that, this is going to have short tutorial videos. This can be really helpful, especially if you're um, wanting to do some sort of training with um, other educators and help them get used to using all the great features that are in Britannica School. So this is here, it talks about how to navigate it, what you need to do. And then on the left-hand side here, you see all these different content types that are here. So for example, maybe you're an elementary level teacher, you can click here to learn about elementary level features, going to talk about some of the things that I just went through here in our session today, but then we have short tutorial videos on all of these. So maybe you're an educator who works with those younger learners. You want to watch a tutorial that's focusing just in on Britannica fundamentals. Here it's under, you know, under two minute video that you can go in and explore. Or maybe, you know, you want to learn a little bit more about Britannica and our process. We have something here on our history but also on our editorial process that can dive in a little bit deeper for you. So there's short videos that you can use and you can watch those here if you want to and get support in that way as well. So we have a lot of great tools here to be able to support you and make sure that you're getting the most out of our resources. So I'd love to open it up if there's any questions. I think we have just maybe a, a moment here, to a couple of minutes, so I can show somebody something if they have a question about something or any other questions. If I don't have the answer for you, um, I can get your contact information and I'll make sure I get that answer for you. And then also, if you're here, um, I don't know how to, uh, usually I put this in the chat box, but I don't know how to do that with the chat box. Maybe Ann can help me. But if um, we also want to make sure that these webinars that we're putting on are helpful to those who are using our resources. So if you're willing to answer a short five question little thing to let us know if this was helpful for you, that would be a, a great resource for me. So it's a little tiny url.com slash uh, evaluate EB. That's really easy to put in there for you as well. But otherwise, thank you all so much for having me. I hope I helped you to see something new that you didn't know was available within Britannica School and that you're ready to go in and engage with this resource. But if you have any follow-up questions that come up after this or you're watching a recording, like I said, you can reach out to me at lgreen at ed.com. And I wanna thank you all for having me here. It's been great and um, stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Nan, are there any questions maybe?